Hello, 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 hello. Hey, everyone. It's Zebulon. It's your favorite community manager for Sansar. It's Elliot. Let me start by showing you a little bit about what's been going on with my own creations. Because I've done some really cool stuff with the experiences that you saw me build previously, and there's some great scripts out there that I want to share with you. So we're going to be loading into Dota World, my watch room that I made. That's all about Dota 2, my favorite eSport after StarCraft 2. I mean, they're both pretty equal. We've got my crazy drop in here of all the media screens playing simultaneous Twitch streams and VODs. And then we land here on this little island. We have our little, our little sofa. Got some beer and some snacks and our wide array of screens. And then we also have back here a, a little bit of a ramp. Because sometimes you kind of want to be looking uh, straight into the screen, you know? You don't want to be craning your neck. You kind of want to be a bit more equal. So we've got a little skeleton bartender, a little bench, a bit of coffee here. And there's a bit more eye level looking straight at the screen instead of down there. And right now, it's playing a Twitch VOD. But thanks. Thanks to the amazing work of Nebulae in our Sansa community, she has built a script that I love. So here's the stream, we're watching it now, and then I type in the chat, slash, channel one, and it changes the channel. It takes a second to load, but it still changes the channel. <laughs> there we go, now it's playing the Beyond the Summit. And now we're watching a rerun of uh, OG versus Team Newbie. So now I'm gonna go to slash, channel two, and we switch to an offline channel. So let's jump ahead to channel 5, see if there's something there. Hey, it's a rerun of a Team Spirit game. There we go. So we have channels 1 through 8 as preset media uh, streams, the same way we'd import them uh, normally to an experience, the same way I showed you how to do it before, and we can just type in chat to just swap these channels. We can just like it do channel hopping with different media streams. Uh, so yeah, isn't that so cool? <laughs> isn't that so great? We have full media switching right now with all this channel hopping. Doo -doo. You should now be looking at the web browser. You are. So here it is. It's a script by Nebulae. It's here on the store. Change media stream for everyone anytime. So you can, you can also do slash stream as a command and type in any new stream in the chat. And then you can also do slash channel and have channels one through eight. And what's also really cool is you can set host mode so that only the creator of the experience has the power to change the channels put on the stream so you don't get trolls coming in and putting whatever they want up there. So really great little feature, uh, great addition to the watch rooms that I've been a fan of making here in Sansar. But I just want to show you that media stream and give a shout out to Nebulae because uh, definitely something I want a feature of, and she was really responsive to helping me, to helping build out a channel feature and a host feature that me and Tolly are both really interested in having in that. Alright, let's get on to the announcement. Are you guys ready? Is there... Is there hype for the announcement? So I gotta get into a appropriate experience. Can I search by user? I can. So I'm going to go to Kung Fury's The Maze. Why am I going to go to a maze? Could I have something amazing to say? No? Too much? I don't care. I live for the puns. I live for the puns. You can't stop me. You'll never stop the pun train. Yeah. Greetings, traveler. Perhaps you'd be willing to help an old man. You see, my magic necklace that protects me from evil spirits on the road has fallen down into this well, into, ru into the ruins of an abandoned and totally not at all haunted temple. Could you fetch it for me? I promise you the journey will be exciting. For you see, labyrinths, mazes, and dungeons have long since trapped wayward adventurers. Some travelers do see their trial through to the end and even find freedom once again. But the task is difficult, and the path is not always clear. 
For this Sansar contest, we are challenging you, the Sansar community, to create a labyrinth experience. So this labyrinth-based experience does not have to be a maze or a labyrinth in the very literal sense where they're bound by their real-world distinctions. For instance, under some terminology, a labyrinth is supposed to have one continuous path, mazes always being a puzzle of branching pathways like you can see the one I'm in now. Uh, we want you to get creative and even adventurous with the path that you put before av avatars and bring interactivity and mind-bending brain teasers to these experiences. So, this contest is starting today and it is running until June 17th, 5 p.m. Pacific time. I'll get to the prizes in a minute, but they're pretty glorious. The goal of the experience should be for a user's avatar to get from point A to point B. So like a labyrinth or maze, you have a start and you have an end. And the goal is to get from one place to the other. That's the basic concept. In addition to that, the user must complete some form of challenge or puzzle in order to reach point A, i.e. walking through a maze, navigating a nebulous branching pathway, or solving a series of puzzles, uh, or even riddles, something like the Sphinx's Lair, or a Legend of Zelda-style uh, temple dungeon, where a series of puzzles will open doors to get you into the next room, so you can solve more puzzles to open the next door, and eventually find your way to, to the end. Um, and then the final piece of criteria, point number three, is that it should be clear when a user has successfully reached point B after having completed this challenge. So we want them to know, okay, that you've, you've done it. Um, that could be as obvious as a little free with like confetti flying out. <laughs> a little sound effect, just like the one I gave you there. Feel free to clip that, use that as your sound bite. So the contest is to create a labyrinth experience for Sansa that uh, is not bound by the real-world distinction of the mazes and labyrinths. In fact, we want to see creativity and interactivity brought to the labyrinth-style experience. Criteria one is that the av user's avatar has to get from point A to point B. That's the goal of the experience. Uh, point there must be some kind of challenge to complete in order to get from point A to point B. Right, some kind of maze, some kind of series of puzzles, something like that. And then finally, it should be clear when the user has reached point B and they've completed the challenge and they're through the dungeon, they're through the labyrinth. So what makes a good labyrinth? What makes a really good one? Well, we definitely want that sense of wonder and exploration. Something that makes you feel like a small child exploring a big world like in Pan's Labyrinth or Alice in Wonderland. Um, and there's definitely something to be said for that aha moment, that real feeling that you've beaten a good brain teacher, when you, brain teaser, not brain teacher. <laughs> We're not talking about beating brain teachers. When you've beat a good brain teaser, when you complete that challenge, that aha, mm, I am so clever moment. We want to give people that feeling. And we also want to see a creative use of Sansa that kind of pushes what a platform can really do. Like we want to see how far you can go with this idea. And then, as a final little point, you know, a really good labyrinth will be something that subverts a user's expectations. Something that sets up one thing and then really gives them a bit of a twist, a bit of a surprise, and they're like, wow, I didn't expect it to go like that, to go this way. So, these labyrinth experiences will be judged based on complexity, creativity, interactivity, and enjoyment. So, we want it to be fun as well. And these will be judged by a expert panel of Sansar staff. Who that's going to be isn't 100% set in stone yet, but I assure you they'll be the top experts of Sansar. So continuing on, we want to see experiences within this contest that are recognizably a maze or a labyrinth to the average person. But we want you to get creative with the challenge portion of the experience, right? Because that's really what a maze or a labyrinth boils down to is going from point A to point B and there's a challenge in the middle. So we want to see how creative you can get with that challenge portion of this notion. Um, and we especially want to see experiences that amaze and delight users without being too easy. Um, definitely something that brings a, 
an interactive element to it as well. That's something the, the user feels like they solved. The most important part, the prizes. Okay, what are the prizes? The grand prize for the Sansa Labyrinth Contest is $5,000 USD. It's not 5,000 Sansa dollars, 5,000 real American dollars. Second place will be a one-year subscription to a 3D modeling tool of your choice, the choice being between Maya and ZBrush. So we will buy a year subscription to Maya or ZBrush, your choice, that's the second place prize. And then the third place prize is an Oculus VR headset, including the Oculus Touch controllers and motion sensors. The deadline, as I said, is June 17th, 5 p.m. PST, that's a Sunday. Sorry, PDT, um, be specific. There are no limits to how many entries you can submit. However, and this is a big however, bring out a couple of big points. The big however is the entry cannot be an existing Sansar experience. So, for instance, the Kung Fury maze that I'm in right now, I'm sorry, Kung Fury, you're going to have to make a new maze if you want to enter a maze into our Labyrinth contest. So, no pre-existing experiences. All experiences entered into this competition have to be built starting today. So, sometime after this date, they have to be created. And the entry must be published before the deadline of June 17th, 5 p.m. PDT. Okay? So, that's the contest, guys. And good luck to all of my dungeon crawlers and labyrinth travelers. May your wits and cunning guide you to freedom once more. Appreciated it. So, what are we going to build today? We're going to build a maze. Okay, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> isn't that isn't that a great lead-in? So, we're currently in this experience. Uh, Kung Fury's maze. Let's have a look at some other mazes uh, that are in Sansar. And I just kind of want to show you some that I think are good examples as well as good experiences. So we're going to go to Versailles, the Invisible Maze. Now this is a really simple idea, and it's actually very similar to the idea I had myself for the maze I wanted to create. Now obviously I can't win the contest, but I still want to make an entry. So this is a really cute maze. There are invisible walls, but I can see the whole maze laid out on the ground. So it's really a maze about perspective. And it definitely has a really nice visual style to it that I'm a big fan of. Um, this kind of like, there's not really light, but the floor glows um, is really satisfying. And if I kind of swing myself around here, look, you can see how I'm just kind of like a black silhouette as a result of this, this light. Only the lights on my avatar are actually glowing. So it's kind of kind of a neat visual stylistic effect and it looks like I have gone the wrong way so I can see how I want to get into center here. So again we're talking about clearly showing where is point A you can spawn at any one of those red spots and then clearly where we're going is this center green illuminated area with a bunch of seats so pretty pretty apparent where point A and point B is and then pretty clear when we have completed the challenge we've reached point B and the challenge being walking through this maze of invisible walls. So, all in all, pretty... If this were to be entered, <laughs> it would be a decent submission. However, unfortunately for say, just to be clear, the invisible maze can't be entered into the contest because it already exists. So, we're looking for new experiences starting from today. So let's look at some other examples. And we're going to go to the memory maze, if I... Get it right? Here we go. Charmarley Nightfire's VR Memory Maze. I hope I said that right, Nightfire. So this is experience is is a cute, cute one. You've locked yourself out, climb to the top to get back in. Pretty simple. We're a wizard, obviously. We're just a tower. What else could it be? And we've got to get back to the top of the tower. Now, you know, you could drag around and teleport, but that's not really what we're doing here. What we've got is we've got two orbs, one red, one blue. And they both have a teleport script. So, I walk into the red one, I get teleported up here. Okay, and I'm on this platform. Uh, do I take red or blue? Let's take blue. Alright, now I'm over here. 
And this isn't great because this one doesn't lead anywhere. So let's go back down here and go red. All right, uh, red. No, not good. Oh, we'll have to teleport to this. Red? No. Nope. I think I think I can see where the memory elements coming in. <laughs> but there we go. I'm not gonna spend. I haven't didn't do the prep work of checking how I actually beat this maze. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not gonna make you watch me do the whole thing. Don't wanna spoil it. But uh, definitely, this is this is interesting, right? It's a little bit more abstract. It's still a maze, a labyrinth in a sense. It's still about a avatar uses avatar trying to get from point A to point B by solving this challenge. But rather than just having pathways, we've got these teleporting orbs that are jumping us around, and we're trying to figure out the right pathway of orbs and teleporting platforms to get to the top. So clever, cute, a little bit different. A little bit more out there. Got a little bit more complexity to it. Definitely, uh, again, just to be clear, this obviously can't be entered into a contest because it already exists. So we're looking for new labyrinth dungeon crawling experiences. But I did want to show you one more example. Uh, oh, I can't remember how to spell it. I can't remember how to spell it. Leslie? There we go. Sokoban by Leslie Sanzar. So this was created by one of our own Sansar staff. And this isn't really a maze or a labyrinth in a more literal sense, but it is a great puzzle. Um, so if you're not familiar, Sokoban is a genre of Japanese puzzle games. Sokoban meaning warehouse, apparently. So, pretty simple. I run in here, I've got these white walls, and I've got these blocks. Okay, I've got five blocks, and I've got five red X's. So let's try and move these blocks onto the X's. And I think I need to turn on experience sound because they do actually make a nice little sound. There we go. You should now actually hit them scrape across the floor. So, a bit more like a Legend of Zelda kind of temple puzzle thing. Classic moving boxes around. They make a little sound and a little light up when you put them on an X. And obviously this first level is very straightforward. I've just got to kind of move them all. But there's a lot you can do with the uh, the walls and the shapes. A lot of these Sokoban games, the puzzle revolves around not boxing yourself in. Another pun. There you go. That's two for two. Um, but yeah, not boxing yourself in, not getting stuck. Not uh, making it impossible for you to continue to solve the puzzle. So definitely, uh, this doesn't really count in our labyrinth contest distinction because we're not really trying to get from point A to point B, right? There's only one point A and that's the door entrance. And then we're moving these boxes into place. And you will see that when I put the last one in place, the walls come down. I get a little sound. And then if I run back over to this, uh, I want to call it a monolith, but it's kind of smaller. It's a, it's a boxolith. And it's going to bring it, so ask me if I want to do the next level. And I was like, yes, bring it on. So this one is, oh, that's not the door. Here's the door. So this one's got a little bit more to it. For instance, there's a wall behind this one. So I'm going to have to move it to the side so I can move it forward without making it impossible for me to continue playing. And again, I'm not going to do the whole puzzle to make you watch me, but definitely some ideas here that are a little bit more interactive, a little bit more puzzly, and a little bit more engaging, but fails in the category of getting from point A to point B. However, really easy to set up that instead of the walls coming down and we're just doing another level, just another puzzle, then a door opens and we go into the next space. And then maybe it's a linear progression of puzzles that we have to uh, progress through in order to get to the exit rather than just resetting in the same place and there's only being one door in and out. So very easy to take this idea and make it fit our labyrinth puzzle contest distinction of going from point A to point B. And so definitely for me, I'm thinking a lot about kind of like Legend of Zelda style uh, kind of dungeons where you've got to go in this half of the route, this wing of the temple, complete this series of puzzles to throw a lever so that this half opens and then back and forth you go and trying to get through to the end and that kind of labyrinth dungeon crawling 
puzzle solving way. I'm going to take a brief pause to sip water and take questions either via Discord or Torly or Twitch chat. 